Hey there, welcome back to my channel. You could have been watching cat videos, but you're not. You're here, and I appreciate you. Okay, so have you just bought a new Pixis 6K or pre-ordered the new 12K? Well, you've picked the right video to watch. So one of the things that makes filmmaking so exciting is that there's no one correct way to do things. There's lots of different ways, and that includes the process of color grading. So in this video, I'll show you how to go from bra straight out the camera to a more clean look. And also I'll show you how to go from bra to a more cinematic look using film emulations. So stick around and let's get into it. So the first thing you need to decide is what color management technique you're going to employ to convert your footage from log to rec 709. There are essentially two ways of doing that. One of them is to use Resolve's own color management, RCM, and the other one is to use color space transforms where you use individual nodes and you convert from one color space to the next. Using DaVinci Resolve color management, this method is managed by Resolve. So you define your input color space, your timeline color space and your output color space in the project settings under color management. Resolve then automatically handles all the necessary transforms behind the scenes. This is best for quick turnaround, consistency, and for users who want less manual work. The second technique is a manual technique using color space transforms or CSTs. So this is best when you want very precise control, when you're doing complex grading workflows, or when you're using footage with mixed gammas and gamuts. But since I only tend to shoot with one or two cameras at the same time and they're always black magic, I use the DaVinci Resolve method where it automatically converts it and I don't have to mess around with nodes or CSTs or anything like that. Right, so first things first, let's have a look at the color management. So this is my color management default that I've set up. And this is using DaVinci color management to manage the transition or the conversion from log to rec 709. So you can screenshot this if you want, have a look at the different parameters and use that as your basis. So let's go and do a quick explanation here. So we're using DaVinci YRGB color management, as I said. So you can either do color manage or non-color manage. ACES, all these other options, but like I said, set it to color manage and it does that for me. Color processing mode is custom because what we're gonna be doing is adjusting it down here. So the input color space is same as the timeline. Timeline color space is DaVinci wide gamut. So that gives you a DaVinci wide gamut intermediate. That gives you a very wide gamut to be doing your color processing in, as opposed to Rec 7 and 9, which is a very narrow color gamut. They have all these different options, but like I said, the one you're going for is the DaVinci wide gamut intermediate. And the timeline working luminance, set so that to 1000 nits. And the output color space is Rec 709A. It's uh, set to A because I'm working on a Mac. If you don't use a 709A as an output color space, when you export from DaVinci Resolve, you get faded colors. So you have to remember if you're on a Mac, use a Rec 709A. So that's pretty much it. So this is how I have it set up for DaVinci Color Manage. Now I also have a preset here if I'm going to be exporting it. I can load that preset. And this is the preset that I'd use if I was not using Color Manage and I wanted to be able to use my own color space transforms. I would set it to YRGB, not Color Managed, and I would use these settings. Yeah, so I go back to my Color Managed profile and this is what it looks like. So when you open the clip in your timeline, then you go to the color page down here. So obviously you have your clip in your timeline here and then you go to the color page. It is like this normally. It says, if you go to the camera raw tab, you have a decode quality and you have the decode using project. If you say decode using project, you don't have access to any of these parameters here. However, if you then change that to clip, then it suddenly comes alive and you can change these parameters. So you can, for example, adjust the exposure, you can adjust the temp, and also you can adjust the ISO here as well. And for me, that's one of the main reasons for using Bro, that you have this absolutely incredible amount of flexibility after you've already recorded. And obviously normally I'd record at 400 ISO, 
but sometimes even though you record at 400 ISO you can still drop it down and it gives you a much cleaner way of increasing or decreasing the exposure and also you have the option to activate highlight recovery if that's something you need to do as well. Right, so let's have a look at this clip and work our way through how I color graded it. So straight out of the camera, this is what it looks like pretty much. So if you're just using the camera metadata, then this is what the image looks like. And to me, that doesn't look bad. I mean, it just needs a bit of contrast and a few fixes. But this clip is one that I'll be using for stock. So the way that I'll be grading it is that I want it to be usable. I want it to pretty much be as it comes out the camera, but just with a little bit more flavor, a little bit more contrast, a little bit more saturation. So the first thing we do is change this camera metadata to clip. And then once I've done that, then I can actually then jump in and start adjusting these camera raw parameters. So first thing I want to do is roughly just have a look at the exposure. To me, that looks like a bit overexposed. So what I'll do is I will drop it down, say 320, 250, mm, say 320 for now, take that off. Okay, let's have a look at her skin tone. Where does that fall on the skin tone indicator line? So let's do a little crop, let's do like that. Okay, let's go hop back to this. Okay, and okay, let's have a look at the skin tone indicator. Now you can see her skin is falling below the line. So that means that she looks a bit green there. So let's just bump that up a little bit. Turn that up, there we go. So now that looks more, that's on the skin tone line. So that should be, the skin should be looking a lot better so that's the first thing we may need to come back to this so we just take the cropping off for now it looks a little bit magenta overall but we will adjust this and we'll come back to it in a second so now what i would do to add my saturation and my contrast etc is i would use dehancer so if i put that on you can see i'm adding a very slight subtle bit of saturation and A slight look to it so if we have a if we dig in and see what we've done let's have a quick look here so you can see I'm using the Kodak Vision 3 500 T emulation and I'm using 2383 print film emulation for that as well if I'm comparing it to what it was before and after before and after it's just a very simple grade which just makes it pretty neutral and gives me something that I can, the clients can then build upon without going too heavy handed. And also I've added, I've also added the slicer tool here. What I've done with that is I've just added a touch of subtractive saturation using the sat value on the slicer. So if we take the slicer off, you'll see there's a, you can see it a lot better on the vector scope. So if you take it off, you can see there's just a subtle shift in the saturation. You don't want to go too crazy with that. So if you do that, you can obviously take it too far and then it just looks a bit wild. Or you can turn it down and it's just, you know, obviously desaturate your image. But what I did is I just had it just a slight bump up here. So it looks pretty natural. So this is before and after. It's before and after. Just very subtle and that's how I get a natural looking, just a very natural looking color grade on this image. And let me have a look at the exposure. Again, that could be brought down slightly to say there, but it depends on, on the usage and what you're going to be doing. For example, because this is going to be used as a stock image, I don't want to have it so dark that it limits the client's option. So I would leave that around here and then they still have the option to drop it and make it a bit dark if they wanted to. But yet at the same time, there's enough contrast there that it's a workable image. So let's uh, go back to the first clip here. So this is what it looks like pretty much coming straight out the camera. Okay, so let's have a look at the first clip. 
So this is what it looks like. Well, actually, straight out the camera is it would actually look like this. If we used camera metadata, this is what it would look like when it comes out of the Pixis 6K. Um, but we want to set this to clip, and then once you set it to clip, then we have some adjustments that we have made. So, for example, the color temperature change that the tint. 48 and the ISO is 640. But the first thing that I normally do is I go and check the skin tone. So I uh, do that by going to crop and I make a little square so that we just have the skin tones. Go back to here and what we want to do is we want to actually change to the vector scope and normally I have this on the iPad, but you can see what it looks like there. So you see that the skin is on the skin line there. We, what we can do is we can actually do it two times so you can see a bit better and it's right on the skin line there. Um, and this is the uh, skin tone indicator, just so in case you didn't know, skin tone indicator. And you can make that a little bit more pronounced. But anyway, it's, it's aligned properly on the skin tone indicator. So if I adjust it, you can see it, it goes up and down above the skin tone line. What you want it to do is to be directly on the skin tone line. So around there is what is right. So we go and take the crop off, go back to color. So once I've looked at the skin tone and I've set the correct color temperature, the next thing I would do is see if I need to change the hue or if there's any color shift in the image. And also I'll quickly pop over and have a look at the false color and see where that is. So if you look at the skin tones, we see here, this is falling exactly where we want it to fall in terms of the exposure. So there's no issues there, but of course that's going to change or that could possibly change once we do the other things we're going to do in terms of the processing. I took it out of where it was and made it because I thought it was quite brown, magenta, and I wanted it to be cooler. So I basically adjusted it to go there. Then the next thing is I plugged in the Dehancer. So this for me is one of my favorite plugins for film emulation. I've set the input to a DaVinci Resolve wide gamut, Rec. 7 and 9. You can actually select different Rec. 7 and 9 inputs because it's already being converted within DaVinci using their color management. So you don't have to actually choose a camera and convert it like you would do if it was a non-color managed. So you could set it to Rec. 709, or you could set it to DaVinci Wide Intermediate, or you could set it to Rec. 709 DaVinci Wide Gamut, which is what I did. After that, I went through and I selected the film stock. I tried a whole bunch of different film stocks, but for me, I really liked the Vision 3. You know, you can choose all these different film stocks, and don't forget that apart from actually selecting the film stocks, you can adjust the push and pull. So then I threw on a bit of Film Developer, A bit of film compression and then use the expansion feature to subtly to subtly increase the contrast and then I chose a print output emulation you have the emulation of the film that is recorded on and then you have the emulation of the film that is printed on in this case I chose the Kodak 2383 which is one of the most popular print film emulations. A lot of big films have been printed on 2383, like The Dark Knight, Inception, Dunkirk, Interstellar, The Hateful Eight, etc, etc. And then I added some film grain. It's very, very subtle, but it makes a nice difference. If you, if you zoom in, you can see a bit of 35 millimeter film grain. That's without it, obviously. That's with a bit of film grain there. Didn't put any halation. I put a little bit of bloom. The halation I thought was a bit too was a bit too much. I mean, obviously you could adjust it, but I didn't really want the halation on there. So what I did was just added a bit of bloom, film damage disabled, disabled, overscan disabled, and vignette, and all the rest was disabled. The other thing that I did was I adjusted the output so that I didn't want it to be a completely overpowering effect. So I knocked it down to seventy-two point nine. There it is without 
and that's it like at a hundred percent and for me that was just a bit too much so somewhere in between was what worked for me so uh, like I said it was uh, I think it was 72.9 and that was a good middle way for me apart from that I also added a look the hue fix and also the look so the look on and off you can see it's very subtle the look is basically the film look creator the internal film look creator that DaVinci Resolve gives you with this one I modify the custom preset first of all you need to look at your color space overrides you can change your white point by adjusting this inside here so d65 is one particular white point but you can change it to 75 or 60 or 50 whatever you do it will change the white point but you can't see it very much because global blend is actually very very low is 0.4 but anyway let's put it back to where it was 65 you can change the core look you have alaska you have elated you have vintage but i quite like cinematic if i just bump this up it's 0.403 i'll just copy that but i just bump it up to one let's look at the white points again so like i said i had the white point set at d65 but you can change it to d50 d55 d65 which is what it was on d75 you know, and any one of these. But when you change these white points, they do give you different looks, but that's not officially what they're meant to do, but that's another little trick that I discovered. The core look that I had was cinematic. So that's cinematic, which was the default look. And then you have Rochester, you have Alaska, you have Elated, and you have Vintage. And then you can adjust all your parameters, contrast, highlights, fade, tint, subtract, sat, richness, just adjust it until you're for your liking. That's it. So I hope you found some value in this video. If you did, it would be great if you can like, subscribe, share, share in your Facebook groups and social media and wherever it is that you do share your content. Until the next video, stay lucky, stay blessed.